Hello, Smite fans. Welcome to the final week of the Smite Pro League Season 2, Split 2. It's week number 7. I am Bart, and joining me on the commentary desk, of course, is Adonis, as you can see there. And uh, one guy that you should know if you don't, it's Incontinentia, uh, now known as Incon, from AFK Gaming. Currently a contender in the North American scene. How are you gentlemen doing? Fantastic. How about you? Oh, look at you. You're a natural. I'm very good. Kevin? I'm I'm doing pretty good. Some exciting matches. Try not to spill your drinks. You know, Listen, it keep was everything once, on the table. I, it didn't spill, what? right? It got knocked over, Did but it, it was it was empty. Totally spilled. Nothing. So, uh, guys, here we are. It's uh, it's wrong. cognitive gaming versus eager world. Two teams that probably aren't getting uh, exactly what they wanted out of this split. Uh, cognitive having a hard time finding wins. Eager dropping some games that I think in retrospect they're looking at and saying, man, we really should have won those. But uh, we were just talking about a little bit. Uh, Riley, generally speaking. As we look at the North American standings here, I think Eagers had a pretty good split for kind of their first test back. Yeah, they've been really looking at this season as a uh, learning curve to getting into the world season to make sure they're prepared and ready to get to the big tournament of the year. And I think, you know, the big story here for Eager is wanting to win out. They want to finish with an even record. They don't want to go into the fall split with the good losing point. record. Yeah. They want to sit in the middle of the pack and look to expand upon that. Yeah, I mean, as as you would expect, right? Like Eager is a team. They're a, they're a, they're a player owned team. Going 50-50, 500 in this split is probably important for them to help find sponsors. Moving into the third piece uh, of of the season, right? So all things told, I think it's an important couple of games for them. And cognitive, obviously, looking to make a little bit of a statement, say, hey, we're really in contention here. But they are, of course, still locked into the relegations uh, at the end of this split, or, or at least they're they're in jeopardy of losing their spots a little bit. Well, Kevin, Riley. Gentlemen, now it's time where we talk to you about what's going on inside the game. Of course, it is the summer sale going on right now. Gabe said so, uh, as you recall. Again, uh, all kinds of stuff is on sale, plus uh, bonus gems for every first one of the day. Plus, uh, we're bringing Gabe, back some legacy Gabe, chests. Gabe said so? Gabe. I feel like I've heard this from something. Doesn't something else do something like this? Like another uh, company? Volvo? Volvo, is that I it? I think Volvo. Volvo has a game? I think it's okay. Volvo, yeah. I, I, so, I, yeah, I'm you saw confused. everything 25% off. Uh, except for God Packs and, and yeah, promotional stuff. But uh, yeah, basically new chess. New chess being brought back from the grave. Your chance to get your hands on La Roca, Hercules, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Hey, this is where uh, you, you talk about your AFK chess, that when it's readily Oh, yeah, purchased. make sure you buy all the AFK stuff. There buy everybody else's stuff, too. You did it, buddy. You did it. Uh, so if you guys are just joining us, this is Incon. Uh, he is the support player for AFK Gaming. My name is Bart. That's Kevin. And uh, we are going to be bringing you Eager World versus Cognitive Gaming here in just a moment. Uh, anything that... You guys want to say before we get into this one? I have a quick question for Incon. So we saw the Cloud9 TSM dynamic grow into sister teams and they've pushed themselves. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, you and Eager are actually the same way. Your sister teams, um, you private scrim partners. Who really created that? How did that come about? Uh, we've been good friends, honestly, for the last couple of years, just in general. Mm. Uh, it was a natural fix for us to go together and be partners and really just better each other. And uh, it fosters a very nice environment when you can talk about how scrims went and really uh, talk about what's the strength of each team from a good pers okay. perspective. How much do you guys scrim outside of that matchup? Is it often an active or is it really like you have a practice partner? It's really a practice partner. It's mm. strictly us. Well, there you go. So uh, we'll see if Eager can bring uh, some of the, uh, I don't want to call it luck, but some of the panache that AFK Gaming has brought to the North American scene here in their contest versus Cognitive Gaming. Let's go into the picks and bands, my friends, and see how it's all going to go down. You right now. You didn't say peas and I'm so happy. <laughs> I didn't say peas. Well, you're on the desk, and you can't do it. Well, I can't. I, don't want, I, I don't just want to refuse. It in front of I you. refuse. No, you tried that one time, and it was awful. It Kevin. was awful, and I'm never going back. It was back. terrible. It Team Eager, my not, friends, not will good. be the second pick position, wearing the red trunks in the bottom side there, Cognitive with the first pick, first ban, and the blue team. It's Athena, gone right away out of the pool. Isis, early ban there. That's That's got to be like the AFK scrims rubbing off, right? Yeah, I mean, Isis is always a number one pick uh, between us, and it's really, you don't, nobody wants to deal with Kiki's Isis. And I really like Cog here targeting out Dare completely. Those are his two top picks in the jungle. He's played Athena four times and Ymir three times, and great success uh, on both of those gods. An Apollo first pick. Wow. That, I mean, so this god we've seen really, honestly, skyrocket through the, we'll call them the tiers, although it's not actually that. Um, but in terms of popularity as a pick, um, we've seen him gone from basically complete, unpicked, unbanned, unlooked at, untested, to, oh, well, it turns out he actually hits really hard with Death Soul at level 1, so let's draft him because he can solo lane and do a lane. Yeah, I mean, Apollo is one of those characters that he was smite for a long time as mm -hmm. far as the ADC role was concerned. Uh, 
he finally got toned down a bit, but now he's kind of evening out. People are realizing that you can still play him, especially with this death toll meta. Yeah, and he's uh, he's really kind of solidifying himself into that jack of all trades style of of God, where uh, he's such a comfortable pick, uh, similar to Aneath in terms of swing as well. But uh, Geb and Medusa picked up by Easter Eager here. Um, Go to comfort lane for them or something a little spicy? Medusa is incredibly strong in landing phase right now. A lot of hunters are having trouble clearing the lane, especially with mana problems, and she thrives off of this transcendence meta. So, this is what we're seeing out of Eager uh, most recently. Very, very heavy guardian drafts. And uh, generally speaking, here, Eager looks like in this draft they're just taking whatever they want. Um, Cogsine's a little bit more focused on kind of the meta I'd of, say globals of the too. game here. Yeah, the globals coming out. And, and, and uh, well, just a little bit more about drafting some kind of very valuable lineup um, versus Team Eager that seems to really have a game plan going into this one, looking at the Geb Sobek draft in the first picking phase. And Eager always seems to have the same game plan. It's put Dare to Care on a god that can get rolling early, yeah. and then you have these two frontline players. Their support is always, you know, a guardian. And then Anatoly will play between Warriors and Guardians as well. He's likely to be playing the Sobek in this game. And they like that frontline. They like to go Anatoly. They put him on a very good team fighting god that has a good laning phase that can get him through, and he can rotate early. Second round of bands are in. Poseidon banned out by Cog. Eager bans out Ares. Indicating to me, at least, they are going to be going for more mobile gods. Agni with his dash. Obviously, Sobek very reliant on his dash. Medusa, her only real ability to uh, escape. And obviously, Geb's roll out all of those. Very central to these gods' kits. Ares makes a lot of sense. And honestly, I'm looking at uh, maybe a Sirket in the jungle here for them. Something highly mobile. Hunbot, Sirket. One of these types of gods that uh, doesn't really like cripples. As you can see, Poseidon Ares banned out. Not a lot of good cripples available anymore. But that being said, uh, the Giannis Apollo will have lots of ability to move around the fights as well. I'm really loving this eager team composition right now for team fights. If you look at them, everybody's got huge, giant AoE skills that's really going to thrive in this mid-stage of the game once everybody gets their oh ultimates my. up. And, and yeah, I think, I think you're keying on a very important point there, in Con. but let's talk about Alquan Guan Yu added to the cognitive roster here to round them out. Um, no real true frontliner, no guardians as well, looking at the two guardian draft from eager. Um, I think that, you know, what you're pointing out there is that the execution requirement for Team Eager to win this game and these fights is significantly less high than what it's going to take for Cognitive. This is a very stylish lineup that they have, a very execution-dependent lineup that they've drafted, and uh, Eager's got, honestly, bread and butter. Who do you, who do you think Eager's going to bring into, likely, the jungle for Cabracken. this last, last pick? I think Cabracken. They could pick another Guardian. They really love that heavy tank line meta. Uh, but they've left themselves open a lot of options. Hey! Ooh, Kali. Okay, well, I mean, here's the thing. With this Kali, you have Geb, which is kind of a prereq at this point, uh, plus a Sobek for some additional PR, plus Agni with lots of range stuns to help set it up, I, and I, a Dusa for the slow, I, but... Mm. I think the big thing is they have lanes here that they are maybe not guaranteed to win, but they're guaranteed not to lose, and that's going to be important. You can't have your lanes pushed for Kali to, you know potentially be invaded. Yeah. It's going to be important to get the Kali rolling. She really needs items to get going, I'd say boots, and probably two attack speed items before her damage is truly there. So here's, you know, what I'm looking at here with the team compositions, with the Kali coming in, um, it's it's a draft for Eager. This is kind of a very typical MOBA strategy, right? If the enemy team doesn't draft enough CC, take something, just take the most greedy thing in the game, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in other games, you'll see that translate into stealth carries, right? Um, because they don't have enough CC to stop you. Kali... Hard to kill, fairly mobile, lots of kill potential in the later stage of the game, super greedy. But what's going to lock her down in the fights, right? It's not the Alquang. Maybe Bologna decides to ult her to save somebody. Besides that, it's a lot of pressure on Giannis and Apollo, honestly, to keep her, him, I, or her I'd appeal. I'd say the only secured CC they have is Meerkat's ultimate. Yeah. The portal from Giannis, that can be dodged if you have high movement speed like Kali's going to have. You have to ult on Guan Yu to lock him down. And then a Mez, which isn't really hard CC, one auto attack, and it's going to break it out. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what to look for here. I mean, unless Cognitive Gaming can somehow get Eager off balance, nipping away the edges with their Assassins and Warriors, it seems really unlikely that they're going to be able to go 5v5 into this Eager lineup. So they've got to be looking for something that spreads the map out and makes room for uh, this Alquang to farm. I mean, also, Alquang as a Guardian killer, I mean, it's okay, but he's really great against the Warriors who don't want to itemize in a Magic Defense. Yeah, and it's going to be hard for him because Kali is going to ult. She's going to be death immune. So even yeah, if he maybe. executes her, that's going to be five seconds where she's not going to be able to be touched. Yeah, maybe maybe you're keying off something there that's a little bit more indicative of why that pick came out is that Kali is, does not care about Alquan. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the assassin versus assassin battle, right, he's really looking at the enemy assassin and jungler as, as a top pickup. But I'll talk about the dual lanes here, my friends. It's Polar Bear Mike and Zatman as the Geb Dusa going up against Homa Fey and Famous Hate as the Guan Yu Apollo. Uh, Incon.
break this one down for us. What's what's the lane dynamic we can expect here? So Guan Yu has way stronger clear than Gab, and he's actually a favorite matchup against Gab because you can't be knocked up within the Talon Assault, uh, which is one of the stronger points of Gab. But at the same time, Medusa has the best lane clear in the game as far as ADCs as go right now. Here. And as it's seeing right now, you can see that she has really pushed that lane, even with uh, Guan Yu a superior lane clear to this Gab. So yeah, his ability to use Talon Assault, which is where he spins his uh, Guan Dao around and uh, knocks the minions back. You'll see he's immune to knockups during that duration, so Gab can't stop him. But, as you mentioned, yeah, the, the Spear Clear Dusa is, is keeping them in the lane for now. And and honestly, I don't see the Apollo Guan Yu getting lane dominance before it's just too late to matter, and Zatman's clearing the wave safely. Yeah, Polar Bear Mike's actually rolling in for damage, and Zatman uh, and Polar Bear Mike do seem to have the lane advantage here early on. If you're Homie FA and Famous Hate, what's your mindset? Are you trying to play passive? What what are, What's your goal as a support in this matchup? Uh, your goal right now really is, I mean, you want to try to get this lane clear. Gebs? one of the stronger, if not the strongest, late game supports in the game, so you really need to put them behind early by getting that gold under the tower with those minions. And if you can't get that control early, it's going to be a big problem pushing into this mid-late game. Yeah, the, the level 5 is also pretty dangerous here, and you can see as they continually shove the wave into the tower that it's going to be a, uh, a golden experience lead for Eager moving into the level 5 position, and if Geb can find that Cataclysm, it's very unlikely they survive with the Medusa Stone Gaze coming out as well. Dare to care with a very early level four pre two minutes, and then he got a wave on top of that. So right now, Team Eager very XP efficient, but you do see Anatoly already pushed out a solo lane. He has no mana, no health. Yeah, he does nope. have blue buff though. Mirka doing a nice job here. Yeah, Sobek of course can heal himself up with sickening strike here and there, um, but Bologna getting getting lane dominance. Not really not what she's known for. She's not known for being really a lane dominator. Uh, more of, of of a fairly safe farmer with some nice kill potential with jungle rotations. But we're going to see, speaking of which, Eager look for a rotation here. Doesn't look like Meerkat spotted this one out. It's not five either. Yeah. It's going to be a question of if he can get five yeah, because totally Team Eager's still looking for first blood. Totally may pluck him here. Now, nope. putting in the damage. Here comes the Kali. It's going to take a stun. It's going to stop out the Bludgeon as well. Not a lot of damage potential with the dashboard. And it's a nice return dash coming out of Anatoly, hogging out the minions. But Dare Care can't really sit here and fight. Now he's going to eat some disarm and be forced to stand there and look a little foolish. And here comes the rest of Cog. This is going to be a first blood going their way. It looks like here. Yes! No, 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 barely getting out of that Sobek. Healing up. Was that a delayed sickening strike? N uh, I believe so. He was aiming for Anatoly, but Anatoly just dodged in time, and Dare to Care actually stepped in front ah. of the Al Kuang Execute. Dare to Care ate the Execute, knowing he wasn't in range, saving Anatoly. Beautiful. Well done there, and uh, it'll prevent the first blood, and Eager somehow gets out of a, a 4v2 cleanly. Blast is there, trying to find Bickham and his invisibility, but not able to do it. Heroin not able to steal the mid camps as well, so... Uh, an early lead for Cognitive Gaming, but Eager were able to close the gap a little bit with uh, trading out the main camps. There is a fair amount of pressure onto this Kali as well in this game. Um, you know, Sobek's building, of course, obviously into the Mystical Male, as is his duty in this game. Uh, but with the Double Guardians, and, you know, it's, it's, there's just a lot of pressure on the Agni to uh, to make it work. So uh, we're getting this. So uh, what happened was Janus actually portaled underneath Sobek, and it caused the Alquang to miss and hit the Kali. Yeah, I thought he had executed <laughs> before that. I guess I, it would just happened at the Apparently exact same time. Apparently it was yeah, ju just at the same time, and that's actually what caused the interaction to fail there. So almost four minutes into this one, we saw the first mid camps go. Looks like they were split there overall. It's about a 200 gold lead for Cognitive Gaming. They've got themselves out of what appears to be a little bit of a sticky situation in the dual lane. Home of Faye, level six, rotating to the mid lane here. Uh, there's the Apollo versus Dusa 1v1, but overall here in Con. Cognitive, a bit of a lead, eager. They're, they're all, they, should they overcome this, and, and how should they do it? Well, I would uh, I would uh, presume that Cog would have this early advantage. Looking at their lanes, they really picked for this individual type play of we're going to win each individual lane and take that win into the mid game team fight. Whereas Eager really drafted the it doesn't matter what happens in the lane, we're going to have the better mid game team fight with our large amounts of CC and control. And that's kind of what you see there. That man is not worried about team fighting. They're trying to play passive and play for the late game. Going to also weigh the minions there. Right, yeah, and that's you're seeing it, generally speaking, being you know fully kind of translated throughout the strategy for the team there. As you mentioned, right, they're all playing that game. Um, they're all itemizing for later on. It's Devourer's Loves for Medusa, indicating that she's interested in a little bit of a later game to start fighting. Uh, Kali, we'll see what she goes for. We would expect perhaps an Ikvial to come out from her, uh, which is really a bridge item moving towards her later. I was obviously, you know, Kali's not going to be a, a really a factor until she's four or five slotted. Uh, yeah, and so overall, I mean, will we see something like super spicy, you think, like Agni rushing to Hootie here? We've seen it happen before. I've seen Lobster do it. I, I don't think so. I think Lass is going to play it safe. I mean, the question is, is he going to go dual more there, or is he going to let it sit for to Hootie? I don't think it's a dual more, because there's one already completed onto the Giannis, um, and he wouldn't have gone back for boots 
three necessarily, although you, can make you do want the escapability, yeah. especially against a Giannis and a, an Apollo who are going to close the gap on you very quickly if you're not careful. I think it's a nice opportunity as well to not itemize into cooldown reduction and go for that pen and damage and, and, and take it to the Giannis who's going to be relying mm -hmm. very heavily on the Doom Orb. When we keep the stacks down, he's not going to be that impressive. Something I do want to talk about, though, on a, I want to go back to this Guan Yu pick, because Guan Yu's not Fine. a god we see played very often in the support role in Indeed. Season 2. What it... Is Homie FA trying to get things rolling early? Incon, is he trying to find yeah, ganks? Uh, you know what, actually, what I want to know, Incon, uh, to that point, is, is a little bit more uh, about why you think they last picked Guan Yu uh, against this eager lineup before the Kali came out. But as you see, Guan Yu taking a bit of damage. He's going to need a bomb as well. Two bombs, but no passive available to tick him off. So, uh, yeah, with, with Homie FA, why do you think they last picked this Guan Yu? Uh, you really pick Guan Yu. Uh, he's a very uh, hard matchup right now. It's hard to pick him. Warrior uh, meta right now support isn't that strong, but he thrives against Geb. Uh, does very well in the land against okay. Geb. He's a pure Geb thing, but I mean, looking at the end of the team fight that they have to go up against here, I mean, do you, do you think that Cog has misdrafted here? Would you go that far? I, I would say that they should have oriented more towards a, a support that could have helped them set up skills in the team fight. They already had a lot of single damage uh, targets coming out. They really needed something to put it all together. Instead, they kind of had this hosmopodge of good individual characters that may not synergize well in this mid-game team fight. Yeah, it feels like maybe they locked themselves into that Guan Yu pick when they drafted the Outquang. Um, Maybe a Bacchus would have been better in this situation. Right, but then they would have been so heavy on magic damage. It would have been too itemized again. So I think that's a little bit of why we're seeing the Guan Yu. Well, seeing Anatoly Sholoff lurking in the waters, of course, that ability does give you back mana. It's very, very good for laning. Not so great in the team fights, but that it is an exceptional laning ability. Still no first blood, but a lot of a lot of fighting going on. Well, that's great. That's great for Eager, right? Yes. And, and no first blood in seven minutes with Akali. You are like, we did it, boys. We're through the woods. I mean, he's got boots online. He's probably sitting with, uh, okay, it looks like he's going to be going Executioner, second okay. item. I don't think it'll be, do you think it'll be Kins, first item? If it was the next patch, I would say it's probably Kins, but as of this one, it's just still a little bit too expensive for him to be picking it up this early. Yeah, it doesn't accelerate Kali's farm the same way an Executioner will either still. Like, she doesn't scale that well off of the attack speed directly. It's the proc, which isn't necessarily effective against minions. So um, I think probably the Executioner as well, boys. Um, although, hey, you know, you, you never know. It, considering this start from them, and considering that he hasn't been contested at all, he's been the one aggressing the lanes, Al Kwong's not getting anything done. It's not the worst game in the world to just go ahead and say, look, I'm going to make my first item 3,000 gold. And Al Kwong's going to have a, a lot of trouble locking players down, especially against, right, Anatoly has Mystical Mail. Mm. So if he's going to blink away or blink into the fight, it's very likely that his invisibility is going to be immediately procced, as well as Geb, his shield's going to be able to cancel out that ult on so many occasions and the fact that dare to care in his ultimate will be immune to death so al kuang if bikram can't get anything rolling here in the next five minutes the later this game goes the better it's going to be for eager yeah, and, and don't forget also right you have you got dusa who dots yes. right and you have kali that has two dots effectively mm -hmm. right lash will dot as well as lash. if you're in range of the ultimate agni passive as well agni passive as well so they have a lot of dots on the side of eager i think that when we're looking at cognitive gaming and we're evaluating this roster i'm sorry this lineup uh, I think that Al Kwong's a weak point. There's just a lot of answers for Al Kwong on this team. Game slowing down, but Cog seems to continually, they're around this Gold Fury. They know they want to get it going early. They're looking for the picks. They're getting out, out thwarted, I'd say, at these mid harpies, and I think that's a problem right now. And Eager is playing this very well. They're playing very passive, very back. They're not allowing Cog yeah, to push too there. far into their jungle. Yeah, Seven to three top. on the supports overall. Hold over Mike. What is that? Seven, 11. 14, Zero, 15, yeah. 16, that, 16 wards coming out from Eager. Mid laner, the duo lane Hunter, and the solo laner, all for Cognitive Gaming, yet to place a ward. Eager have the most wards placed of any team heading into this week. Mm. Like, by 40. Well, here we go. Homofei, he's going to get Cataclysm. There's no follow-up. He's going to avoid the Agni Bombs as well. Last is a little bit off the mark there. Charging Polar Bear's in trouble. They're looking for a fight, and Polar Bear Mike is going to be in trouble. Yeah, he's going to go down right away. That Alquang ultimate, I'm not sure if that was fired off. It, it was not, no, it so still has it available. Dare to care. Finds that kill to Homofei on the late rotation in destruction. He's immune Activated. to death, though. He's going to have to back off there, Heroin. He's going to look for the Unstable mm -hmm. Vortex. One more shot. Not there. Oh, is Lash far enough? No. Bickham's going to knock up Agni, and that's going to be all she wrote. You can't outdo that. Rotation coming in from Apollo. He's looking for Kali. Dare to care. He's not going to juke it. No, no, no. Down you go. Famous hate finding himself credited for a kill. Anatoly's rotated over from the soul lane as well. And here comes Zatman just off the mark, unfortunately, with his ultimate. It was Aegis out in the middle lane there. Disarm is going to be enough to save Meerkat for the moment as well. But uh, it's a three for two. It's a bloody exchange here to start the game off with the kills. Eager coming out slightly ahead, although the gold is all squared. Incon, what did you see there? 
That was a good initiation from Polar Bear Mike. He was just off the mark hitting two targets. He did man uh, manage to get Homafe, but then last was a little bit slow on the follow-up. Uh, the bombs missing him allowed Homafe to re-engage that fight, and they got the first blood out of the game. Yeah, but uh, you get Kali with a kill and two assists for her death. Worth? Uh, any kill on Kali early is good. Uh, the death, you know, does hurt, but any kill on Kali will help her just get to that snowballing stage where she needs to be. I think the important thing there is that Al Kuang, while he took a kill, he also died as well. So right now, the Kali and Al Kuang are evenly matched on farm, both at 5,500. Yeah, individually, there's about 10 gold separating them, and uh, both of them have quite a bit of late game potential, but of course, Kali is, is the queen. Famous Hate able to find a kill in the back line as well. That should help him against Zatman. He's got about a 200 gold lead, but I mean, with how passive I, we've seen Zatman playing in lane, uh, enough to alt the which minion is a, which wave. Which is a bizarre thing yeah, to what, say. How, how did that come about? <laughs> yeah, what have you been doing? You've been like messaging Zatman on the slide and doing some life coaching? No, he plays very aggressive in lane. This is uh, definitely just playing towards that team composition. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you have to switch around and play to, the, to your strengths. This is the third time we've seen Lassus spend all three bombs on Homie FA. The first time it was, he was very close to dying, but since then, it seems he's doing it just to poke Homie FA out. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, he's basically challenging those Talaria boots. They're actually, no, they forced him out so they can do gold. That's right, but, but it, you said the second yes. time, right? It's, it's, oh, you went Talaria boots? Well, guess what? I, I'm just going to dump everything into you because your HP pool is not going to be big enough to deal with this. And you're going to be delayed on your next item, as you can see. The, the Geb has uh, bought into his armor a little bit earlier, not finishing off his boots just yet. What do you think about that decision, or do you think that's the decision at all? That was a really, uh, uh, honestly, that was a huge play right there by Eager. Really smart playmaking there by Last. By forcing out Homie uh, Efe there with those Agni Bombs, they really got a free, I mean, they honestly got a free Gold Fairy because but he had to back, they knew he had to back because he was low. They took that time, they had the Hog 3, they didn't. That's a free Gold Fairy, and that's a ginormous win. First big win of the game. It's also worth noting out that, uh, that Heroin took a spill earlier on as well here. And is now trying to restack that Doom Warp. That was in the last engagement. So back up to about 50 stacks now. But uh, those power boots paying dividends for Lassus in that last engagement. He's also, Herwin's two levels behind Lassus right now. And Lassus is yeah, that abusing his advantage. Yeah. And, and that, that gives him the luxury of dumping all the bombs because he has plenty of lane dominance versus Giannis with a level advantage and mm -hmm. the Path of Flames ability to clear the wave. So, um, yeah, all things told, it's, it's, it's a peachy game for Eager. And I think it was, it was an important ban onto the Ares there uh, that really opened up the strategy for them. All the mobility on this squad very heavily reliant on their dashes to make things happen. That was a huge gold fury because right now Eager was able to get their power spike items completed, all of them. Look at it. We see Ickful completed for Zatman. Uh, nothing for Polar Bear Mike. I don't think he's back dead. Poor guy. But then we see the Spear of the Magus coming out from Agni. We see Executioner finished on Kali and Power Boots and, and Mystical Mail coming out from Anatoly. So they're going to have a pretty big advantage over Cog for a little, little bit. What do you think about the the power boots versus cooldown boots after Mystical Mail on Sobek? Uh, for Sobek, he really has a mana problem. Uh, he has it built in the ultimate to get some of that mana regen back, but the power boots on Sobek are really strong. He doesn't necessarily thrive off of cooldown. It's all about big burst, one-time damage, uh, and then you kind of back off the fight with Sobek. Well, there it is. If you are just joining us, guys, I am Bart, and Kevin is the other commentator on this, and then, uh, as you heard just speaking there, that's Incon from AFK Gaming as our pro player Wait, inside Incon's here. Wait, here? Where? Oh, hello. Oh, hi. And uh, we're 14 minutes into this one here, two to three in favor of Eager, where they enjoy a, a modest gold lead and a, uh, a pretty substantial experience lead at this point of the game. About 5,000 experience going in their way. You can see that translated into a couple of levels up in, in a few key positions there. Their core is well, leveling. Again, Lassus yeah. is spending every single bomb on Homie FA, and you can really see it too. He's only level 10, but Famous Hate may take a spill in duo. Yikes, here we go. The dot is active on him. Get knock up, and there it is. Oh, man. Kill credit to Zatman, but another assist for Kali, just staying involved here, getting involved early. It's an undercut on the Giannis portal. He's not going to be able to aggress with this. He they need to be careful, though, because Lassus is also following that rotation. Would have been a 4v2 if Cog elected to try and counter-engage, but meanwhile, we're going to see... Look Meerkat. at the ward coverage there from Cog, oh, or from wow. Eager, on the Everywhere. bottom left corner of the map. I mean, just complete coverage Five there. Five wards. That may be more wards than Cog. Totally expected that rotation to come out from Giannis, and they saw it coming all the way. They want this Tier 1, and uh, Eager playing what appears to be one of the best tactical games at all that I've seen this split. I mean... Uh, everything is working for them, and everything seems premeditated. Every every move they make, every step they take, I've been watching it. It's been great. I I can't even respond. I I can't I can't handle it, Bart. I can't handle it. Are you feeling the sting of Zatman's poison it's arrows? It's just you know, I don't know. Dare to care is just playing like a police officer. He's he's roaming around and he's finding and catching people caught out in bad positions. And Homie Fe may be caught out again if he's not careful here, but. 
Looks like Eager doesn't want to fight. So, Incon, tell me a little bit about playing a game where you're the homie FA, where you're just getting, like, keyed off on, you're level behind, and you're getting dumped on. How do you recover from something like that? Right now, he needs to just be very careful. Uh, Guan Yu has a good strength in the mid late part of the game. Once he can get a little bit of cooldown online with the built in cooldown on his heal as well as his dash, he can really spam heals for his team towards the mid portion of the game. He has to make sure that he's living until then, and that might require Meerkat to be the initiator. But he needs point. a lot of. I mean, is it a Jotun's Wrath he's building after the Sovereignty to get to that cooldown? If anything, I would get the Breastplate of Valor to help against that Kali because the Kali is going to be tearing apart everybody. But would you at expect at the same time, sorry, Lassus no, yeah. has been spending all his bombs on Homie FA. If he's electing to go into that physical protection, I mean, it's just harder for him if Lassus targets them out, isn't it? I would consider that a win, though. If you can get their mid laner, this okay. Agni, who has the spear, who has these power boosts, to get burn all three bombs on you, that means that your squishies can go in and do a lot of damage to their backline free of charge. Okay. Well, 4-2, to two, boys. 60 minutes in here. Eager. Still continue to expand upon that lead. Now 3,000, what was once 2,000 gold. And wow, look at that. 7,600 experience. Yeah, and, and you said it right. A very tactical game. It's only 4-2 to two in kills, and they have one gold fury, but that's a 3,000 gold lead. They've gotten that 1,500 off of just out-farming, and it seems out-playing, out-maneuvering COG. Yeah, it seems like they're catching COG unawares here. Um, a couple of times, it, it's looked like COG's like kind of rotating, being like, oh, damn. <laughs> they're already done with the gold fury, or they've already taken our tower, or, or we're regressing into a Geb who's about to cataclysm us off the right I, side. Of the I camp. almost thought they were gonna. I thought they were gonna denial strat it because denial yeah, wait. likes yeah. to do this too. But normally they'll but they come out a with a sentry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, looking looking back at our duo lane matchup, Zapman now two levels ahead. He's a kill ahead. Uh, he has his ick file plus a little bit of bonus attack speed and a sprint three versus a sprint two and beads here. So there's a lot of kill potential on this Apollo. And maybe even more importantly, that man's ability to wrap around the Gold Fury here if they take an engagement and start hitting the back line, which we'll see generally mid-game hunters look for that type of play. Uh, it will be a bit faster than they expect, I would, I would imagine. Um, his ability to gas pedal is very, very dangerous here, 17 and a half minutes in. Eager's still, I, I think Eager's going to try the same thing. They're going to try and force Homie FA out. Even if they don't get a kill, they want to make sure he has to back and then look to instantly go on the Gold Fury. You see both teams, you know, kind of positioning around it around it, but neither team wants to go ahead and force it. Uh, itemization here from Cognitive Gaming. Let's touch on that, as I think it's it's relatively important. In Connor, you heard earlier, kind of describing that Guan Yu needs to pick up some cooldown reduction. You can see them itemizing accordingly. The Heartward Amulet was completed on Bologna. Uh, they've got the Sovereignty on Guan Yu, as he does need that bonus HP, and he's one of those items, and now he will look probably for that Breastplate of Valor. Executioner finish for Meerkat, so he's going to be avoiding Ikfile altogether in lieu of taking a defensive item. Kin size are online for Kali. Three twenty minutes is very fast. She doesn't fast. have beach. She doesn't have Vitalis, so she's gonna have a hard time sticking on targets, especially with the mobility coming out from Cog. But if she can find it, she's going to kill someone. They have they have Geb, Agni, Dusa, right? They, I mean, they can lock a target down for Kali to hit it. But Gold Fury started up, and I don't think even the the cavalry charge is gonna be enough. The red hair not gonna close the distance. Trying to make it as Homa Faye. Yes, it will be in time. Medusa Ultimate expended and does nothing to stop Homa Faye making it to the back line. Zatman in some trouble, but now he's turning around and putting the damage out onto the Guan Yu, who once again is the favorite target. Last is credited for that kill. Polar Bear Mike is erased. Heroin credited for that kill with the shotgun. And now moving into the back lines is Meerkat trying to make the play. Anatoly, his ultimate will fire, dealing quite a bit of damage. In comes Apollo as well. This fight, while being a lot of kills stacking up for Eager, it looks like it's going to turn back in favor of Cognitive. Unless the can make it happen, it was his target that he takes out. That's a kill. And he's going to look for the second as well. Well, he'll get it! It's a double kill for Danicare! It's a five-man wipe, only the Kali left standing. And honestly, it's it's the dream now. Zatman, I'm sorry, still alive as well. They'll take the Gold Fury, and they get two kills out of their Kali. Three and one. Shinzai's paid out pretty nicely there. Yeah, I'd say two big things happened there. First, we saw Cog kind of light initiate. We saw Homie FA run in. We saw the Giannis ult come through. Homie only stuns out Zatman. And then he's kind of a sitting duck. Yep. Meanwhile, bomb, Lassus... Bomb, bomb. Zones out the enemy backline. Cog takes so much damage, but Meerkat, on the in the same sense, was able to alt into the backline and find three carries alone with no aid at all. Yeah, almost turning that fight for cognitive gaming. There was that late rotation coming in from Famous Hate. If he somehow wouldn't be able to disrupt and let Homafe live and continue healing up the team, there's a good chance they turn that one back in their favor. Instead, Dare to Care kills his target, and uh, well, he he reaps the spoils, finding a double kill as well. So. Uh, 10,000 gold net worth has been broken by Kali and Medusa here. 20 minutes, Fire Giant potentially started by Cog. There, it's not potentially. They're going to start it up here. And Eager's just watching five men from Cog, but they don't want to commit to it, it seems. And now they're going to look for kills. 
And no, they're just, they're going to back off, but Eager might be able to reinitiate this. They've spent that gold advantage that they just got. Yeah, Kali's still a little bit low on mana here, but um, it's a two-level advantage on the Polar Bear mic, and that's huge in these types of engagements. What What's Eager trying to do here right now in Con? They just got gold. They have about a 6,000 gold lead. What's your mindset with this lead? Eager needs to just group up and make a play. They can either bait a fire giant fight or they can just shove down the mid lane. They have the XP lead. They have the gold lead. All they need to do is group up and start to force something. Bring the fight to Cognitive Gaming. Who are you trying to target out? as eager right now. Who's your main yeah, target? Who's the problem? Right now, I mean, you're looking just to get in the back line and do as much as you can. The Al Quang could turn on at any point, so he's always a good target to get off of your back line. But as far as counter initiation goes, there's really nothing on the way of cognitive gaming. Homie Faze only level 12 right now, two levels behind Polar Bear Mike, and even if he was ahead, he would still be having a hard time right now. And it seems like really the problem for cognitive of these fights is honestly Anatoly Sobek. It's so disruptive, and he's controlling so much space and allowing for these types of plays to come in, although this time it doesn't take a subback to get there, although he is in a nice position to try to pick up a kill on this. Giannis is going to force out the ultimate with an ultimate of his own, but that sends Giannis back to base and, a, and an angry subback turning the corner there. They're uh, not going to be able to defend this tier one now. Yeah, he'll and completely If Anatoly can find a pluck on someone rotating in, they're likely to take a spill as well. Here's the pluck. Can Meerkat survive it? Why was that so free? I don't know, but Anatoly just under tower. He's oh, going to find no, the kill, and they'll pick him as there. well. That could have gone so much worse for them had uh, had Lassus elected to not go for the Alquang. Oh, Homafei, he's going to try to make something happen, but he's running through Path of Flames, and that's just taking away, eating away his health. Spear of the Magic stacking, stacking up as well. Not to mention, there is a Void Stone being built and worked on by Sobek and has that aura active as well. So all near true damage coming out. Once again, getting picked off one by one is Cog. And it, as if I said it, Anatoly helping me out there, you can just see how much Sobek has been a problem. He's too tanky for them to easily kill, and he's so disruptive in And he's taking a Phoenix right now at 22 minutes in. Bickham and Herwin are trying to defend this. Dare to care is going to all. I don't know who his target is, but if he can get this heal, he'll live. It doesn't look like it's Herwin's, but Zatman. Oof. I'm surprised Herwin went that in kill there. there. A little, little hungry there. I think uh, kind of Gaming throwing in the towel a little bit here as, as they chase some kills. They go down. Uh, they're down 7,000 gold now as, as things are starting to get... Pretty ugly for them. I'm sorry, 9,000 9, gold. Wow, math is hard. 9,000 gold, 60,000 really experience. Yeah, and that experience is, I think, the big thing. Only Zatman level 20, Anatolian Data Care, and Lassus actually are all 19 as well, but they're all three levels, two to three levels over their counterparts. Can we take a minute to talk about Polar Bear Mike? Because we have Incon here on the mic and do what I did there. Um, that was great. How ridiculous is it this player is able to step into a team like Eager and immediately be performing at this level? It's really something incredible. Being able to come from a challenger league team, moving up to the pro league and going in to fill the shoes of a person like Aurora who was such a strong support is really incredible. And the fact that he's built up synergy so fast with this squad is just a testament to how strong I, he is. I, I they look better with Polar Bear Mike than they did with their original starter. I agree. Yeah, they, they took their game off Cloud9 with Polar Bear Mike. As a, as a mid-season swap, that's, that's unheard of. Yeah, homie FA here. He's going to likely take a spill. His ult's coming out. But it doesn't even matter if he dies at this point. going to go through? Yeah. I mean, everything is used I, there. I have one question to expand upon that, Incon, as Fire Giant's about to be it's started done. here. Yeah, there's no way. Um, are you helping out Polar Bear Mike? Are you guys, te like, are you telling him strats and how to play as a support? Because I know that's the big thing with TSM and C9 is they are undying, like, they do not hold back. They tell the other team their strategies, what they did wrong, and what they can improve on. Are you doing the same thing with Polar Bear Mike? Of course. After every game, we always make sure to talk to each other, and we talk about what was the strengths and the weaknesses of that game. It's always good to get the viewpoint of another team and say, wow, that was really strong. We didn't know what you were going to do there. Or, hey, you probably should have done this instead of while we were okay. doing this. And it's just the absolute worst nightmare. It's Geb, who's built a Magi's Blessing. Like, two, like, if you, if this character, or really any Guardian for that matter, gets ahead and is able to skip one of their defensive items for a very early match as Blessing, there's almost nothing you can do about it. As you can see, the front line is just owned by Eager with this double Guardian. There's Anatoly just nothing happening. has not missed a pluck. Anatoly is playing the best game of Sobek that we're going to see this season. I mean, I can't think of a better one. I mean, not too many. Maybe Zalia has matched him. I mean, he might take a spill here. Maybe but on the you can No, he's not, oh actually. That man's going to save him bait. out. But, I mean, yeah, you're right. Zalia, Zalia maybe has had a more explosive and, and kind of highlight reel game than this. But in terms of game impact and high value out of that pick, oh yeah, this is the best game I think we've seen all split for the Sobek. I mean, just complete and absolute control and denial of anything that Cognit wanted to do. He really just 
completely spread them out with tail whip over and over and over again. They couldn't get back into it. And it's not even just the tail whip. It's it's the plucks. I said it just there. I think I saw him maybe miss one pluck. And the ability, while it seems pretty basic and easy from the aerial perspective, it's not always that easy to hit, especially no. on targets who are knowing it's coming and expecting it's coming. He's finding the pickouts and allowing his team to burst someone down and then take 4v5 fights every time. Absolutely. Well, Incon, you know Guardians. Was, was Were Guardians the big difference here? Was that what it was? That game was all about initiation and frontline. Uh, the cognitive roster just didn't have the oomph to get into team fights and start them up. They had to try to counter engage a lot of these uh, fights, and really the Geb ultimate plus Sobek zoning was just too much. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point, right? And I think that Medusa ultimate factored in really well, right? They drafted Geb Medusa really early on, and they were able to transition that into this kind of team fight composition that allowed for this colleague to really run free, and also had some decent ability to bail out a Sobek if he misses a pull. Uh, it, that that stone gaze cone was really really helpful for them as a tool in these fights rather than an initiation or kill style ability. They really use it more as a utility thing. First Blood, though, did go the way of Cognitive Gaming, but this was a fight that they got First Blood, but they also gave a kill to Kali, and they took, I think, two more deaths as well. Bickham finds this, but they commit so much to it, Cog does, that I really think Eager came out on top of this. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I mean, it's, it's nice it's a nice to have kill onto Al Kwong. It, it's a, basically, if Kali's not in the game, and that's a Hunbots it trades with, it's like, good on Al Kwong, right? He needs the farm more than the other jungler. But in this situation, trading those two junglers, not worth it for the team that's not holding the Kali. Yep. Let's take a look at jungle control, though, and see who is at the top. Likely eager. Yeah, 60, 61%. Yeah, that's, I mean... 83% mid camps. You know, 50-50, it, it, and, and even a 5%, 6%, 10% swing either way is, is normal here. This is pretty large amount of control. Um, and you see it translate out maybe most here. Speed buff, right? Two speed buzz lost by Cognitive Gaming in favor of Eager there and mids 20, 20 to 24 controls you mentioned there. 83% uh, of those. And that's really, I mean, Incon, maybe you can talk a little bit to this, but uh, how important are those mid camps? Is 80% control an indicator of basically a guaranteed win? Mid camps are just really important, especially for the sport and the jungle rolls to get ahead. Uh, at some point, Polar Bear Mike had two, three levels up on the opposing support. And that comes down to Geb is extremely strong at securing mid camps, plus the level five of Geb is extremely strong with Cal. Gold Furies and mid camps really yep. did it there for them. Uh, player of this game, guys, it's Dare to Care as the Kali. Uh, in my heart, it'll be Anatoly, but I'm sure the highlight I, reel is I way so more impressive too. for the Kali. And that's the thing. Too. We didn't really say Dare to Care's name at all. He was finding the kills in the back line every single time. It was really the, that huge disruption from Anatoly. But that's the thing. Great positioning by Dare to Care. He knows without a Fatalis or Sprint early on, he can't go in, but he's still able to pick off the carries uh, after the fight has been started. Yeah, definitely worth mentioning, right? Getting six kills on a Kali, being involved in 17 kills on a Kali without a Sprint, is uh, really a testament to how good of a player Dare to Carry is in mm -hmm. terms of, specifically in this case, positioning and, and, and map knowledge, map awareness, where people are going to be when and why because you don't have the luxury of just walking them down. Well so, done. Great. Not much to say about that one, right? I mean, it, it just a really nice performance from Dare to Care. The slash line ends up being very, very impressive. It's probably on the back of some, some really nice frontline play coming out of Tolly and Polar Bear Mike, but all credit where credit is due. I mean, you, you put up 17... You're involved in 17 kills on Kali. I mean, that's yeah. How many? I don't know how many kills were there in total, but I'm sure that was probably a majority of them. Yeah. I don't think there was yeah. that many kills coming out from Eager that game. Yeah, uh, about 19 kills for them. Okay. So uh, all things told, right? Like Kali, as you recall, right? She made the first rotation and set the pace for aggression in that game. Al Kong unable to do so. I think that really, it really hurt Cognitive's ability to get into this game. Yeah. What's your mindset as Cog? going forward in a game two. I know it's been a while since you know you lost the first <laughs> game, I, but, but pretend you're, you know, season one where you guys were like third, fourth place. What's the mindset you're going to go back after to a loss? I think right now you just look at, you know, we played strong, we played our game, but we need to switch up our team composition a little bit. You look back at it, you go, oh, it was just the draft. If you base it down to the draft, it takes all the pressure off of everybody. How important is the draft right now? The draft has always been about 60, 70% of the game. That much? You yeah, think it's like, e yeah. even even from like COG to, to C9 or AFK, 60 or to 70%? Researching your opponent will never be less important. Okay. How, how important is the um, kind of jockeying for how popular a pick is versus what you know they're going to pick, right? Like, if you're playing against a team that always drafts Giannis, how important is it to ban the Giannis versus banning, say, the Poseidon? You always want to play the players, you know. If some st team is stronger than another team at something, then go ahead and ban those out. You take away people's comfort picks, and it really puts them in an awkward position. And I think uh, Weekend on his interview said, said it great, right? 
all the top teams, and that's probably why AFK has really skyrocketed, is all the top teams, you can say who they're going to look to first or second pick. AFK, you can never predict it. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, there it is. Well, guys.